As it is graduation Sunday here in the house, uh, we have an amazing speaker today. Uh, we are going to have our youth pastor come up here. Pastor Christian Boone, come on up, brother. Let me tell you, one thing I love on graduation Sunday and getting to have our youth pastor speak is that you guys get to see that we're not watering down what the students are getting in student ministry. We're still seeking the presence there. They're getting the word there. And we are so thankful for the hours and the work that he puts in, the prayer he puts in. And so, Pastor Christian, we are excited, man, for you to bring the word today and encourage us. God bless you. Let's go. Can we just give it up one more time for the graduates? The graduates. Yes. Yes. I tell you, it is an accomplishment. I'm in the schools every week, and I see just how hard it is to graduate. So we don't want to take that lightly, okay? We do not want to take that lightly. Well, I am excited, very excited to bring y'all the word today. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready to hear the word. Now I need you to look at the other neighbor you just rejected <laughs> and say, I'm ready to hear the word. All right. The title of my message today is Anonymous, okay? This message is inspired by a season of my life and a book that I But I feel like God spoke to me and gave me some very special things for Mustang Creek today. Before we get started, we're going to have to define a couple words that we're going to be using pretty often in the message today. The first word is anonymity. Anonymity, which means the condition of being anonymous. Some of you might say, well, what does anonymous mean? I got you. So the next word is anonymous, not named, unidentified. Anonymous means not named, unidentified. There's many things in life that are not named and unidentified. But what do we do whenever we are going through a not named and unidentified season of life? When most of us say we want to be like Jesus, we're often thinking about 30 through 33. We're thinking about Sermon on the Mount, Jesus preaching up a storm, we're thinking about Jesus casting out demons, healing the sick, or maybe even the strength that Jesus shows when he's withstanding the enemy in the wilderness. And all of that is good, and we all want to be like Jesus in that time. But I came to tell you some of the most powerful seasons of Jesus' life was spent in quiet anonymity. Can everybody say it with me? Anonymity. Not m ms but anonymity. We, just like Jesus did, have a great opportunity to allow God to mold us, to shape us, to prepare us, and develop us in our anonymous season. Let's pray real quick, y'all. God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to get into your word today, Lord. God, we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Everybody say it? Amen. Hey, man, we need some feedback today. Well, I want to tell you my amazing mother is here today. My amazing mom is here. Ain't she pretty, y'all? She is amazing. My mom is amazing. And I uh, just want to tell you a quick story. Uh, going back, I've been raised by two great parents, had them my entire life. Now, my dad, he passed away in 2018. And man, that put me in a season. <laughs> of anonymity. I felt anonymous for a long time. I would wake up one morning and know who I was. He passes. I wake up the next morning and I don't know who I am. I wake up one morning. I know exactly what I want to do in life. I wake up the next day. I have no clue. My dad was my best friend but he also spoke life into me. I went from a time where I had someone who believed in me, he saw the best in me, everything that I did he praised, to all of a sudden having nothing at all. 
and that hurt for a long time, for a long time. For a little bit, I even stopped going to the church I was at. Um, I would watch it online, but I was just staying home. I couldn't go to work. I couldn't really do much of anything, but um, I still had faith, you know, and one day I'm just sitting around and I was depressed. I was sad. And I just felt like I heard the Lord say, your breakthrough is on the other side of you getting back up and going to church. So I got back up and went to church. I saw two random people that I remember meeting earlier. So I just went and like a very normal person does, I sat right in between them. And I was just like, hey. So right after that, they introduced me to the youth pastor. I got back involved in church and I started serving. But I still felt overlooked. I still felt like the season I was in was still very present. I was still depressed. I was still having a hard time until a day where a pastor friend of mine now came across my path and he said, hey, man, there's a pastor in you and I want to help draw it out. He was like, I want to take this time and I want to pour into you. And man, did he do that. And because of that, I'm able to stand here today, but also on Wednesdays, help out with the youth. But in that time, even as I was getting poured into, it was still hard, but I had to have faith. Which brings me to my first point, which is anonymous seasons require faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Everybody say faith. faith. What is faith and why is it important? Well, the Bible has an answer for us. Hebrews 11, 1 through 2 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it man of old gained approval. How many of y'all know what that meant? Me neither. Now, King James Version, I like the way it says it a little better. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We live in a, a world where seeing is believing. I believe the beauty of God's word and the contrast that we see right here, especially in Hebrews 11, is basically that faith is a preserving hope in the promises of God, whether you can see him or not, okay? Whether you can see him or not. Now that we know what faith is and what it does, why is it important? What does it do for us? It says in James 1, 2 through 3, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Produces patience. I love that scripture, and I love the Bible. When you really break it down, you can really see what God was saying back in the old days. That word faith translates in the Greek, it translates to a word that says it's called pistis. It's always a gift from God. So faith is a gift from God, and it's never something that can be produced by people. Okay? In short, I love it when it says like this. It says, pistis, for the believer, is God's divine persuasion. Let me say that one more time. Faith is God's divine persuasion. There is nothing I can do to manufacture more faith. There is no formula. It is a gift. It is a gift. Our faith is a gift that is transformed and grown by the power of God. Y'all hearing me? All right. It says in Romans 12 and 3, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So again, God is allotting to us the measure of faith that we believe in. Why is this important? Because when we are going through seasons of anonymity, where we feel unheard, we feel unseen, we feel overlooked, we don't know which way to go, we're asking God for a spouse, it is the gift of faith that is the foundation that sustains us, okay? I feel like some of us might feel like we're too old to follow our dreams. Some of us might feel too young to start pursuing our dreams. 
You might feel thrown away by the world, by your job, by your spouse. You feel overlooked. Ultimately, you might be asking, God, have you forgotten about me? I'm not sure about y'all, but I've definitely had some moments where I've asked God, God, have you forgotten about me? You're just going to leave me out here? Well, what are we supposed to do? How do we increase our faith in this season? If we just said that we can't manufacture faith on our own, what are we supposed to do? It says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I believe the amount of faith that you operate in is directly proportional to the revelation knowledge that you have of God through his word. The more that we spend time with God, God gives us more faith. We are not making it happen. For some people, I know myself, I've went through seasons and people are just like, have more faith. And I'm just like, I can't. And they're like, unbeliever. And I'm like, no, I just, I'm just struggling. But in reality, what I needed to do was get in that word. And I needed to stay in that word. That is the absolute reality. When we have faith, we can be patient to see through what God has called us to do. I love scripture. Do y'all love scriptures? I hope y'all love scriptures because I have more. Now it says in James 1, 2 through 3, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. I like other translations too. Some of it say produces patience. But we're just going to keep going with this one. So not only do we need faith, we need what? We need patience. We need endurance. Which brings me to my second point. Anonymous seasons require endurance. Not only do we need faith, we need the endurance that faith produces. Okay? The word endurance right here literally means to endure. Surprise. <laughs> it means to endure. I love the dictionary definition of endurance. It means to suffer through something difficult or challenging patiently. Even the world knows what the word says, to suffer through something difficult or challenging patiently. Patiently, that sounds like endurance to me. It says in James 1, 4, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete Lacking in nothing. Everybody say nothing. Now everybody say no thing. I love saying nothing as no thing because it's literally no thing. We're going to be lacking in no thing. That's what I believe. The word perfect in that scripture is translated teleos. It means having reached its end, full grown, full age, but especially when it's coming to Christian character. So that is the key. We finally get to the point of what I'm saying today is that what we can see is that God uses our seasons of anonymity. God is trying to do something in our waiting. He's trying to develop us. When we're going through seasons where we don't know where to go, where we're struggling and God is doing something, we might not see him, we might not feel him, but he is developing us. He is a good guy. He doesn't waste any pain. He doesn't waste any season, right? So we can believe that. We know who he is. We know we serve a good God. Sometimes we're asking God, God, what are you doing? I'm just mad. I don't know what to do, and I don't know what you're doing. And I believe he says exactly what his scripture says. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, <laughs> nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's beautiful for one reason that sticks out to me is because instead of us waking up and having to do, like the song said, act in performance, 
We get to wake up and be. Be what? Be a son. We get to wake up and be a daughter. We're thankful that we can wake up knowing that our lives is in the hands of a wonderful, wonderful father. He doesn't waste any anonymous season. There is nothing that scares him. There's nothing that we're going through that shocked him. God doesn't look at your life and be like, oh my, I did not know that was going to happen. Angels, where's the script? No, that's not what happened. God is with us. He's holding us. He's directing each and every step that we take. So I had a dog. How many of y'all are dog people? It's a lot of hands. Well, for a season I had a dog, and it was a multi poo. No, uh, no, uh, at all. But I would wake up. I love this dog. We'd go for walks. We'd hang out. Sometimes I would look at him. He would look at me. He would smile, I think. You know, I'd smile back at him. I'd be like, I love you, dog. And he'd be like, woof. Good dog. There was a day where I decided I was going to teach him how to enter his kennel and exit his kennel on command. So I spent a few days doing this. Now, the last day that I ended up spending doing this, it's kind of a funny thought, but um, I put him in the kennel and I locked it because I had had some furniture from Ikea. And how many of you love doing furniture from Ikea? I better not see one hand, sir, put that hand down. That is a lie from the enemy. But anyways, I was putting together some furniture from Ikea, and there was a ton of nails, a ton of screws. I laid them out. A lot of them fell in front of the dog's kennel. And so he just gets to barking, roof, 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 roof. I look at him. He stops for a second. Roof, 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 roof. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should get him out. But what I noticed is if I get him out, he does not have the wherewithal or the thought or the maturity to avoid the obstacles right outside of his kennel. If I take him out of his kennel, it's dangerous. I wish, I remember thinking, I remember sitting in the house and thinking, if only he knew I was preparing a way for him. And I felt like I heard God say, if only you knew I was preparing a way for you you could just sit and wait a little longer. And I was like, but God, I'm different. He was like, no, no, son, you're not. I was like, oh, man. But if he only knew I was preparing a way for him, I think that he could have been a little bit more patient in that season that was very uncomfortable to him. I believe some of us, including me, get so caught up in what we want from God that we don't know how to be patient and wait on him. If only we could see that he was preparing a way for us. You know, the young folks say, um, let him cook. When somebody does something good, they say, let him cook. But how much do y'all know if we were food, God would put us in the oven and he would let us cook. Because if he pulled us out too early, we're not going to be good. We need to cook a little bit longer. Sometimes we need to develop. Sometimes God is making a way for us. A lot of the time, we just have to have the faith and stand on his word and know that we serve a good God and he's holding us. He's holding us, y'all. Which brings me to my third point. Anonymous seasons are a gift. So at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, we see Jesus being born. Then we see him in chapter 3, he's baptized. Then in chapter 4, before Jesus' public ministry, everybody say before. Everybody say before and do your hand like this. Before. Okay. Before Jesus' public ministry, 
testing had to take place, even for Jesus. Y'all said y'all like scripture, so we're going to read some more. It says in Luke 4, 1 through 14, we're going to read the whole passage. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they had ended, he became hungry. I resonate with that today. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this domain and its glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it shall be all yours. Jesus answered to him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And he led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. As Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the surrounding districts. I love this passage because it shows Jesus' humanity to me. He's in the wilderness, and just like we do every single day, he's getting tested by the enemy. He was going through an extremely tough wilderness season, but yet he had faith, he had endurance, and also he was developed in the wilderness. And some of y'all are like, y'all gonna have to show me Jesus being developed. It says in verse one that Jesus came into the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit, but in verse 14, when he left, he left in the power of the Holy Spirit. Then he went into the ministry. But first, he had to get power from the Lord. In that wilderness season, a season that probably stunk for him, he came out so powerful and had the most powerful three-year ministry in all of history. What I'm saying to you today is, when we are in seasons where we are wondering where God is, if we're too old for God to use, when the enemy is attacking our mind, when everywhere we look around, we're lost. When we're asking God, Lord, for the single people, where is my spouse? If you're married, you're asking God, how do I deal with my spouse? <laughs> God, I got laid off and I feel overlooked. One thing we know for sure is we can rest assured that God is up to something. And he's developing something in us that will sustain us in the next season. Now I'd just like everybody to stand to their feet. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, If you're in here and you're saying, I'm in a season right now and I don't know where to go. I feel worthless, helpless, or maybe you're in a season and you feel overlooked. You don't feel chosen. Or maybe you're asking God to do something and you're in a season of waiting. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you right all over the building, I just want you to lift your hands right now. Don't think about it. Lift your hands right now. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Thank you for your boldness. I see your hands. I see your hands. Thank you, Lord. I see your hands. You can put them down. We don't want to take for granted that everyone in here knows for Christ. 
if you're in here right now today and you say, I don't know Christ, but I want to know Christ. I want the God that will sustain me when I don't know where I'm going, when I don't know where to turn, when I have no idea what to do when I wake up in the morning. Lord, I don't even want to get dressed. If that's you and you're saying, I want to know Jesus today, all across the room, I want to see you raise your hand. Thank you, thank you. Now I'm gonna challenge you something. If you raised your hand for that first one, I don't want you to think about it. I don't want you to let the enemy talk you out of it. We have people up here at the front that's ready to pray for you right now. We got people up here at the front ready to pray for you right now and speak life into your situation. Do not let anything stop you from getting life spoken into your situation. If that's you and you raised your hand, I challenge you right now to come down to the front and get prayer. Even if you didn't raise your hand, I believe there's more people that say, hey, I need to come down to the front. I need prayer and that's okay. But the altar is open. If that's you, come on down. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit and washed in
Thank you for what you're doing here. God, we thank you that you are with us in our season. God, we choose to trust you through it all. In Jesus' name. Pastor Christian, thank you for hearing from the Lord and sharing with us this morning. Appreciate that. Man, we are here at the finish line in Forney ISD. It's the last week of school this week. Man, it's a busy week, but I wanted you to know if you are a parent of a student or of a uh, kid, they are having on Wednesday an end of school celebration It's going to be a luau. It's going to be fun. We're going to celebrate crossing the finish line. And we also have service for men and women. We're going to keep going uh, into our Bible study time. And so you're invited to that. And secondly, next Sunday, I want to invite you, if you have ever thought of, possibly interested in, or curious about, joining and serving on the media team here we are going to have a lunch after service for you to hear all about that see how they operate i want you guys to understand the importance of this this is a team that doesn't uh, always get noticed except for you do notice what they do because you see the screens you see the hear the sound you uh see the lights the videography that happens. Do you know that we live stream into people's homes and people have been saved? serving on and if you're not this is a great on-ramp of a team you can serve on guys as we close this service I just want you to lift your hands like this and let's say our blessing together teach us your ways that we may know you and find your favor we love you God bless you you are dismissed